Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I shall feast at the table spread for me. and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I shall feast at the table. Spread for me, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Amen. It's because he paid a debt for us this evening. Amen. He paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song. set me free. I'm glad that Jesus did all my sins erase. I now can sing a brand new song, amazing grace. All day long, Christ Jesus paid a debt that I could never One day he's coming back for me to live with him eternally. Won't it be glory to see him on that day? I then will sing a brand new song.
touch him, you will never be the same. Let's stand. He is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. He is here. Holy, holy. I will bless his name again. He is here. Listen closely. Hear him calling out your name. He is here. You can touch him. You will never be the same. For the mark of your home. May you may be seated. All in him this evening. 251 if you need it. The mighty God is Jesus. The Prince of Peace is He. The everlasting Father, the King eternally. The wonderful in wisdom by whom all things were made. The fullness of the Godhead in Jesus is displayed. It's all in Him, it's all in Him. The fullness of the Godhead is all in Him. It's all in Him, it's all in Him. The mighty God is Jesus and it's all in Him. Emmanuel, God with us, Jehovah Lord of hosts, the omnipresent spirit who fills the universe the advocate the high priest the lamb for sinners slain the author of redemption oh glory to his name it's all in him it's all in him the fullness of the godhead it's all in him it's all in him it's all in him the mighty god is jesus and it's all in him the alpha and omega the beginning and the end the living word incarnate the helpless sinner's friend our wisdom and perfection our righteousness and power yea all we need in jesus we find this very hour it's all in him it's all in him the fullness of the godhead it's all in him it's all in him it's all in him the mighty god is jesus and it's all in him our god from whom we've waited will be the glad refrain of israel recreated when jesus comes again lo he will come and save us our king and priest to be for him that dwells the fullness and lord of all is he it's all in him it's all in him the fullness of the godhead it's all in him it's all in him it's all in him the mighty god is jesus and it's all in him hey amen there's a lot of truth in the in the song and verses but some people just can't see that he's the godhead amen right. amen what a day that will be amen there is coming a day when no heartache shall come 
No more clouds in the sky. No more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace when he takes me by the hand and leads me to the promised land what a day glorious day that will be there'll be no sorrow No more sickness, nor pain, no more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day. shall see and he took upon his face the one who saved me by his grace when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land what a day glorious day that will be because of his unchanging hand. Let's change this. Let's all stand up and hold to his unchanging hand. Amen. Time is filled with swift transition. Not of earth the moon can stand. Some things eternal Hold to God's unchanging hand I'm singing Hold to God's unchanging hand Hold to God's unchanging Changing and I like this right here. Trust in Him who will not leave you. That's right. Treasures 
sing it down. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Reach up to him. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. changing him. Let's get ready to go. When this journey is completed, amen. If to God we have been true, fair and bright, your home in glory. Listen to this. You're in rapture, so with you. I'm singing home to God's hand. Home to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things. Amen. Let's change over the service. Let's see. It's my brother comes. You need. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. your power and love as we sing holy 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 I am lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power Come to the right place if you want to see him. You're looking because he's in his people. Glory. He's not in one man. He's in a whole group of people called the bride of Jesus Christ. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to be here. I like Wednesday nights. It's middle of the week. And the real faithful are here. And uh, we thank God that uh, he gave us a middle of the week. Right. There's a lot he didn't. But thank God he's given us a middle of the week to come in and and just listen a little bit and learn a little bit more about him. Amen. And that's your desire, Brother Brown said, if you don't want, know more, want to know more about God, there's something wrong with you. Amen. So good to be here. Uh, by the way of announcements, Brother Dale and myself will be leaving in the morning, going to Kentucky, well, Illinois. Brother Richard Douglas will be here Sunday. And uh, both services, we will be at Brother Richard Hyatt's. We will not be preaching simply because he asked me to come back the next Sunday, so I'm going back the next Sunday and preach for him in Kentucky because he's got a, uh, he's some kind of IT guy and he's got to take a trip, and he has no other ministers to back him up. So 
we're going to do that for him. But we will be in church service and be back here probably about 8 or 9 o'clock Sunday night. So keep us in your prayers. And we'll be doing some work up there, and it's going to be hot. So just uh, keep us in your prayers. Also next Wednesday night, a week from tonight, Brother Landland, Brother Rolando Genesis will be here from the Philippines. Uh, he's coming in on Tuesday. He just sent me a, me a message. And now on September the 8th, Brother Matthew Bray will be here with us. That will be the uh, weekend of the, uh, of the Bible study. So that will be September the 8th. And then September the 15th, I'll be at Brother Tim Humes for a Sunday service uh, for him. So just keep all these things in your prayer. If you got your Bibles, let's turn to 1 Corinthians 15. I want to uh, take a little subject that uh, it comes up. It comes up quite often, um, and there's a truth to it. But I'm going to read you a quote in a minute where Brother Brown said, one word off, yeah. one word off, right. took him out of the Garden of Eden. Right. So you can say what you want to tonight, but if you think Brother Dale and I and the ministers in this church are dogmatic, that's fine with me yeah. because one word off, and you are going to be doing your funeral. Right. One word off, right. you will not take a body change with one word off. Right. Jesus Christ was the word made flesh. He took a body change. Right. He wasn't one word off. He was the word. Right. And as you keep this in the back of your mind as we go through this tonight, and I may be 9 o'clock getting finished, but you know what? We'll stand out there on 9.30 and talk. Maybe we'll cut a little bit of that talking short outside. But uh, I'm going to get this finished because we got a couple of weeks that we're going to be gone. So, But remember what Brother George Quinn said Sunday. Boy, that was probably the best sermon I ever heard him preach, especially Sunday afternoon. He said, Scripture cannot be broken. Amen. Scripture cannot be broken. Amen. And Brother Brown tells us that faith's final resting place is in the Word of God. Glory. I, I, I was thinking that yesterday... I read the Bible now more than I read the prophet's message. You say, oh, well, so did everybody else down through time before the prophet came along. You better read your Bible. Brother Brown didn't say study the message and pray. He said, if you want to get closer to God, read your Bible and pray because that's God talking to you. Now, we know that Brother Brown lined the Bible up. We couldn't have done it without him. But now that we have the divine interpretation the revelation, then that filter of the Holy Ghost ought to be able to look down at the Word of God and filter all the junk out. Right. Amen. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Right. You look at my title and you'll probably understand kind of what, where we're going. In Adam, all die. Right. In Adam, exactly. all die. Right. All right. 1 Corinthians 15, we'll read that in just a moment because you know what? That's what the Bible says. All right, so let's go to the Lord in prayer for a minute. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you give us. Lord, we're not here to make anything of ourselves, but we're here to prove that your word is right and it cannot be compromised. It cannot be one word off. It must be spoken as you gave it. And thank you, Father, for sending us a prophet that we can take the essence of this message and that we can see what man has pondered and wondered about since the beginning of time. You brought us the divine interpretation of the word. And that had to come from Almighty God himself because we were lost, not so much lost in our soul, but we were lost in religion and lost in many things of traditions of man and and many false doctrines, we all come from different avenues of even denominations and come into the message to see the truth, Father. Now that we're here, Lord, we know that the devil's here also. And he's going to try his best to stop us from seeing the truth because that's what he did in the beginning. One word is what took him out of the garden. So one word off is not going to put us back in. Lord, some people may say that can't be done. I... All scripture must be fulfilled. Amen. We which are alive and remain to the coming of the Lord will not prevent those that are asleep because we'll all be what? Changed. Amen. 
Amen? So we'll be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. God, you promised that, and Scripture cannot be broken. Amen. Father, forgive us of our sins and the daily things that we do against you. Father, we ask you to cleanse those. Just listening to the prophet here just a few minutes ago where he prayed, Lord, for you to forgive him of the things he did that day. Forgive him of the certain things. Lord, a prophet, how much more are we to get on our knees and say, God, forgive us of our sins. Lord, just come and speak today. You be the one to do the speaking, Father. You're the only one that can do the revealing. So as the Holy Ghost comes to anoint, Lord, we pray that he'll anoint this whole building. That he'll anoint everyone that's watching that we'll understand what's going on in the day and hour that we're living in. Give us this day, Father, our daily bread. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15, 20 says, But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die. Now remember the Bible doesn't say Adam is the father of all living. Because right. he wasn't. Right. Amen? Amen. Eve was the mother of all living. The Bible says that. But Adam was not the father of all living. But as in Adam, it didn't say in Eve all die. It says in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. There's a contrast there between Adam and Christ, the first Adam and the second Adam. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruit, afterwards they that are Christ at his Coming. Now, when is the coming of the Lord? It's revealing of his word. It's right now today. Amen. Today is the day that Christ is here. So you may be seated in the Lord at his blessing to the reading of the word. But remember that again. Remember these two things. In Adam, all die. Right. And scripture cannot be broken. Right. Same way as, as anything. And I'm just going to say this. It's, uh, maybe a little contentious, but I'm going to say it anyway. I don't agree with what Brother Joseph Branham is doing in, in Jeffersonville, okay? But I do agree that his pretense is, is that the people, preachers of this message, have messed this message up so much, get back to the tape. I agree with that 100%. But it's got to be through a five-fold ministry Amen. that gets the message to the people, and they will be. Scripture cannot be broken. Right. There will be a fivefold ministry that will bring a group of people to the perfection of the saints. Amen. Amen. But I do agree that this message has been messed up by the preachers in the pulpit so much that you could be frustrated and say, hey, get back to what the tape says. Well, in this church, that's not so much. But in a lot of other churches, they're not saying what the tape says. Amen. They run it through their own filter and they get something different. Amen? They get something different. If you get something different, then it's what? One word off. Right. All right, let's go to Genesis 2.15. And I want to, and, and I think some of you know where I'm going. There was a, it, it seems like that a doctrine that's real prevalent, especially in foreign countries, but it originated in, in Canada, because I heard that I'm old mouth, that, that Adam had to place his natural seed into Eve to save her. Well, I don't agree with that. That's not in the Bible. And Brother Branham never said that. Okay, so you run it through your filter tonight, but I'm going to read you the Bible, and I'm going to read you the prophet's message. And you got to run it through your Holy Ghost filter. Tonight, you run it through your Holy Ghost filter because I just read you the Bible. It says, in Adam, all die. That's what the Bible says. So whatever Brother Branham teaches, the same way with the Daniel 70 weeks and all the things that, that people say that he was off or, 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 or missed it or whatever they want to say or wrong, it's got to compare with the Bible. Exactly. If faith's final resting place is in the Word of God, then that's why I said, that's why I told you I do. I read the Bible now every morning, 30 minutes every morning, and I probably don't read that much of the message because I believe now, this is just me. I believe if you get the essence of the message, Brother Luis and I were talking about this the other day, getting the essence of the message is not a verbatim quote because a verbatim quote you may say anything you want to say. 
But the essence of the message, listen, true redemption through the opening of the seals will straighten up all doctrine. All doctrine will be straightened up with the revelation of the seven seals, not just on the surface, but all that year and a half that I spent that God, with God's help to try to get you to see the plan of redemption because the plan of redemption did not, did not come from man's sperm. Please, that's where everything got all messed up. Listen. That was the quote that he planted, the, or the, 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 the preacher said, and I've heard it said many, many times, that Adam had to place his natural seed and Eve to save her. No, you know what? That's what killed her. She died anyway. She fell. They both needed a lamb. They both needed a redeemer, and I'm going to prove it right here. And the Lord took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Now, remember... <clears throat> there's a couple things we got to cover tonight. And listen, if I get too fast, hold your hand up and say, slow down. Okay? Hold your hand up and say, slow down. All right? But I'm going to try to clear this up by what? By the Word of God. Amen. All right, so let's read this right here real quick. I said I wasn't going to read it real quick, didn't I? I just said I was going to read it real quick, didn't I? Hold your hand up and say, slow down. Okay. And the Lord God took the man. Now watch. Genesis 126, man was that theophany man that God in Genesis 126 says, let us make man in our own image. All right? Now that person, that theophany was Adam. That part that God was putting on the earth to be the God of the earth, that was Adam. Is that all right? That was Adam. In spirit, form, theophany, not a tangible flesh man because when Genesis 2, he takes that man and puts him into human flesh. Is that all right? Say amen. amen. He puts that Genesis 126 man into the Genesis 2 6 man, and that gives God a man on earth in human flesh to rule the world and to do whatever he needs to do on the earth, to contact the earth. That's what our five senses are given to us for. See, taste, smell, feel, smell. See, taste. Tell me to be quiet. Tell me to slow down. See, taste, feel, smell, and hear to what? Brother Brown told us that contacted our earthly home. See, taste, feel, smell, and hear. We use it every day. All right? But now then you got the five inner senses, memory, reason, conscious affection, and imagination. Now, remember, I want you to keep that in mind because we're fixing to, I want you to watch how this reacts in the Garden of Eden. You'll see what happened between Adam and Eve because, remember, God said you don't love There's a filial love and an agape love. Filial love is that memory, reason, conscious, affection. Amen? You cannot love God without having the Holy Ghost in your soul. You cannot love God. All right? That's agape love. That's the love of God. But now the love you have for your wife is not agape love. It's filial love. Amen? All right? And the Lord took, Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Now, remember, he'd already put him in human flesh, and we're going to cover that in just a minute. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, we know what Brother Brown said, that a thousand years is a day, and a day is a thousand years. No one lived. Methuselah lived 969 years. Adam didn't live but 900. Didn't live but 900. It'd be nice to be 900. That, Sister Cleta, that'd be 10 times what you are now. Goodness gracious. But thank God we don't live that long. Could you imagine? America's not even 300 years old. If you was 900 years old, you was way back under in the... <laughs> you was in three church ages backwards. Yeah. So thank God we don't have to do that. Right. But the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of. Now remember, what was that tree that they were not supposed to touch? Right. What was that tree that they were not supposed to touch? Right. You say, well, that was Satan. Yeah, and I've got another quote. Brother Bram said it was Eve. Not supposed to touch it. Right. 
and the fruit in the midst of the garden. If you older ones know what I'm talking about. Because remember, you are the fruit of your mother. Amen? That's where God hid that with Moses. He hid that into that. He said, partook of the fruit. Well, you're the fruit of the womb. All right? Everybody okay with that? I may say some things that may be a little, you may have to explain to your kids, but you know what? I just got to say what I got to say. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Now, remember, like Brother Dale says, that doesn't say help mate. That says help meet. That's somebody right here beside you. Because right. remember, <coughs> we forget all these other quotes and we just say what somebody else said. Right. Because somebody's got a big name in the message and we listen to them on YouTube or whatever it is. We just quote it because they quote it. You better not. Right. You better study what we say. Because right. it's your soul. Right. Amen? Amen? The Lord God says it's not good that man should be alone. Because remember, before the fall, Adam and Eve were co-equal. Yeah. Right. Co-equal. Exactly. Until after, I mean, it's not until after the fall that God put man over the woman. Right. They were co-equal. Exactly. Right. And Eve being a byproduct of Adam didn't make her a lesser vessel. Right. Right. It made her the same thing. Right. Amen. All right, Brother Dale's covered that many, many times. I want you to, I'm going to stir up some of this background that you've heard for 50 years. Yeah. All right, and some of you hadn't heard it, so we're going to try to stir that ground up again. Right. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Amen. Adam named all the animals, and like I said many times before, when he was naming the animals, God wasn't nervous. God said, that's exactly what I was thinking. That's exactly what I was thinking. Why? Because Adam had the mind of Christ at that time. Amen. All right. Everybody understand that? Say amen. amen. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and the fowl of the air and every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. In other words, Adam brings the lion up. Well, the lion didn't come by itself. Mrs. Lion came too. Right. Yeah. Mrs. Beast came too. Amen. There was a, a, a male lion and a female lion because back in Genesis, before Genesis, the sixth day of creation, listen, there was intercourse between the animals and they were producing babies. Exactly. Everybody okay with that? Right. You say, well, now how do you know that? Well, when God took that lamb and slew it and took the skins off and throwed one into Adam and throwed one into Eve, that would have ended the lamb line if that would have been the only two lambs on the face of the earth. Does everybody understand that? Okay? So it's not a problem with the animals reproducing. God tells them in Genesis, multiply and replenish the earth. But he doesn't tell them to subdue it like he does in Genesis 1.26. You've heard us preach on that many times before. Because you and I have the position that we have, we have that God nature. Glory. They have nature. Right. We have a God nature right. because we have a soul. Right. And God in creative evolution, right. Right. boy, that's hard to say. No, Brother Brown said it. Right. In creative evolution, he started with the small and come all the way up. You know what? He comes all the way to the monkey and then he puts the beast in. Right. Then he brings man and puts man into human flesh. Right. Amen? That's questioned many times before that people have asked, and I want to settle this tonight. The reason that you and I, the reason that Adam and Eve were put in a body they were put in, everybody understand me? Yes. It's because it was animal flesh. Right. So when he put Adam in his body, he had a male part. When he made Eve to be in creative evolution, he had to make a Eve with a female part. You know what the word woman means? It means man with a womb. Amen? Woman means man with a womb. Now remember, he didn't call her Eve, he called her woman. She became Eve after the fall. All right? So watch what happens is when Adam, when God brings all these cattle and fowl, they're reproducing. But Adam is standing there and can't reproduce anything. 
He's alone. He needs a womb to reproduce himself. To reproduce himself. Because listen, you've got to take this all and type it to Christ. Christ needs a womb to reproduce himself. Not a physical womb, but a womb of the mind. Because listen, Satan got to Eve's womb first in here, up here. Then the act happened. This is where the fall started, not down there. That was just, the, that was just what? That was a manifestation of what was up here. I hope everybody understands that. That's really like ABCs, okay? But it's going to help explain what we're talking about here in a few minutes. But for Adam was not found a help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, took one of his ribs, closed up the flesh instead thereof. What a wonderful operation. Didn't even leave a scar. Right. And the rib which the Lord God take from, took from man made he a woman. What? Put her in female flesh. Right. Because listen, Adam and Eve, he told them to multiply and replenish the earth. Amen. You can't do that with one person. Right. Adam said, this is now bone of my bone. And flesh of my flesh. Now, as we've said many times before, that is a literal statement. Whatever God took, the DNA he took out of Adam, that bone, that rib, he took out of Adam, and he formed Eve and put that theophany of Eve inside that flesh right. called woman was Adam's flesh. Right. But it was the female part. Because in Genesis 1, 26, let us create man our own image. Right. Male and female created he them. Male and female. Right. He ha you have to have a male and a female. Right. Amen? Brother Brown always talks about you don't take a woman to your bosom because there's always an imprint. Right. Well, you know what? Think about that. That's what he wanted. Yeah. He wanted us to have an imprint. Yeah. Think about it. Whatever the male is, the female is just the inverted of what the male is. So it's a man with a womb. To what? To reproduce itself. God told them to multiply and replenish the earth. So he told them they were just going to do what God told them to do. But Adam couldn't do it by himself. So God, instead of going and getting what? Somewhere out here in the dust, he takes from Adam and makes himself... Himself, right. he reproduced, he makes himself yeah. so he can reproduce. Right. Because remember, her name was Adam. We're not going to read it, but remember the Bible says, and her name, their name was Adam. Right. Right. Why? Because they were the same. Right. Except she had the feminist part and he had the masculine part. Right. So don't worry about, uh, you know, don't worry about why God put us the way we are. He knew we'd fall and knew we'd need what we needed, but still being in creative evolution, we had to come just like the animals. And I'll read it to you in just a minute. I'm not just going to say it. I'm going to read you a quote. It's what I told him the other day when I was preaching somewhere else. The last time I was preaching, I said, I said something. Oh, it was in Arizona, and I said something, and they all kind of went. I said, don't you believe i got a quote for it if I'm going to stand out here and say this? Don't you think i got a quote for it? Therefore, look, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Amen. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Exactly. I missed a quote, didn't I? No, I didn't. Now, let's read this quote right here. I had to insert this. This is one of my favorite sermons. I quote it a lot. It's Oneness, 1962. Very good. This is where Brother Ram talks about God and Adam and Eve being one. Because that's what we got to get back to. Now, let's think seriously. Because you'll never be able to think anymore after this, after this mortal life is over. Your thinking is now. You cannot choose after this. You must choose now. For this is the day of choosing, making your choice. Now, she, he's talking about Eve, one word, not a whole Decology, decalogue, or whatever that is, decalogue, just one word. She questioned God because it was presented to her in that light that that word was questionable. God's word cannot be questioned. Like Brother Quinn said, all scripture cannot be broken and all scripture's got to be fulfilled. So you can't break scripture. And any doctrine you have, it has to come 
straight through the scripture. Right. And I just read the scripture where the Bible says that Adam all die. All right. So there was nothing redeemable about Adam or with Adam. All right. God's word cannot be questioned. He meant just what he said. But she questioned it because it was presented to her. What? Satan was preaching her sermon from his pulpit through the beast. But she questioned it because it was presented to her. Oh, God surely didn't mean that, but he did mean that. God means every word he says. And it doesn't need any private interpretation. It's just the way he said it. Well, you say, how do you know about the Bible? I believe that my God has guided this Bible. He watches over his word. He knowed that atheists and infidels would rise in the last day, so he's watched over it. This is exactly the way God meant it. It's the way it's to us now. Now, we must believe it. One word off of it. And we lose our fellowship. Go off into to death, eternal separation from God, just as Adam and Eve did. We must believe God's truth. Amen. So that was in, in, in line with, with you, you think sometimes that we're, like I said, combative and dogmatic and all these. We're just trying to save you. So we're just trying to get by. I want to see everybody take a body change. Amen. I don't want to just preach a little vanilla sermon that how good you are. And you are good. But I do want to show you, though, when a false doctrine comes in, what to do with it. Right. You take it back to the Word of God. Right. You take it back to the Word of God. Right. And really, you don't have to take it to the prophet's message because you might find a quote that's kind of like what the person said. Yeah. But if you take it back to the Bible, this is the way, exactly the way God meant it. Right. Right. Everybody all right? Say amen. amen. Now let's start. I've only got 15 more quotes to go. We okay? Mm. Questions and answers on Genesis. Now, but then there's no man to till the soil. No man to till the soil. This is in comment of the scripture we just read. And then God formed man, Genesis 2, 7, out of the dust of the earth. Now we follow it. He formed man out of the dust of the earth and put this supernatural spirit. Got it? Genesis 1, 26, man... He put into that 2-7 man. That's that supernatural spirit he's talking about. Because there's no way Adam could name all the animals and rule the earth with not having some kind of God quality inside of him. Amen? Amen. He had to be led by the Holy Ghost. Even Brother Brown said they had a Holy Ghost veil over their eyes because they were naked and didn't know it. But see, that's a problem. But when the fall happened, that veil was lifted. And now we live under a lust veil. That's what he said. I didn't bring that quote, but that's pretty strong, but that's what he said. <coughs> and we do. Uh, you got, you don't, anybody got a problem with that? Yeah, we live under. That's what we live under. That's why it takes the Holy Ghost to make us turn our head, men right, and women. It takes the Holy Ghost to turn us right. away from that. Right. And that has to be the one inside. Right. Because before... We had our conversations in the flesh, Paul said, in times past, with the what? Lust of the flesh. All right? But being born again, now what? We turn, that turns. And we focus our supernatural love to God and our natural filial love to our wife. Amen? Our husband back and forth. All right? <clears throat> now, he was laying there. I can have many pictures of it. I can see Adam standing. <clears throat> Now, I believe when Brother Brown's looking at a picture, I believe he's really looking at a picture. <laughs> I believe he's looking. He, listen, he, he had the first Wi-Fi there ever was since God because God would just throw a screen up right there and show him what was going to happen or what had happened or what's fixing to happen. Didn't need no wires. Didn't need an antenna. He just went, there it was. Bluetooth. I can have many pictures of it. I can see Adam standing. Why do you think he knew Eve was blonde-headed and blue-eyed? Right, exactly. He saw her. Right. right. And you know what? That was kind of strange. Brother Branham come up in the era of no-color television. He'd sit there and watch a Bonanza or Gunsmoke in black and white, but when he was telling the people their problems, he said, I see you got on a blue dress, yeah. and, and, you, and you're, you're driving a red car. He, he, was looking in, he was looking in technicolor, and we were looking in black and white. Right. Thank God for a spiritual Einstein Glory. that came to tell us 
and give us clarity. Not change the Bible one iota, but to give us clarity of what God was talking about. Amen? Look, <clears throat> see him standing like a tree. God had made him. He was dead as he could be. His toes like roots were sticking in the ground. God said, let there be or breathe the breath of life into him. And he jumped, came to himself. He was breathed the breath of life into him. He became a living soul. And he began to move on, move on. And then God taken from his side a piece of him, a rib, and made a woman. See, he didn't take Eve and go over there and pull her out of the roots like, like the, the, the sh would show that here comes Eve. No, Eve come out of Adam. That's why you and I come out of Christ. Because you've got to think your contrast. Because remember, the first Adam was in the transgression. The second Adam is what brought it back. So see, there was no redemption in the first Adam. He's the one that killed us. The second Adam is the one that brought us up. The second one is not planting natural seed. He's planting a spiritual, spoken word seed like he was supposed to have in the beginning. Amen? And then God taken from his side a piece of him a rib and made a woman. Now, where did he get the spirit? Woman. See, when Genesis 1.26, he said, Let us make man in our image. After our own likeness, <clears throat> created he them, man, male and female. He made the burly spirit for the man. He made the tender little delicate feminine spirit for the woman. How wonderful. And you know what? That all came from God. Glory. That didn't come from the devil. He can't make that. He can pervert that, but he can't make that. Right. All right? <clears throat> so let's continue on, number two. Look, Jesus came to manifest the Father. This is Questions and Answers, 1954. Look, in the beginning, God made man in his own image. Is that right? Now, see, I'm building a foundation to bring us to what, what we're going to talk about, okay? <clears throat> so go with me here. In the beginning, God made man in his own image. Is that right? Well, what is God? A spirit. St. John, the fourth chapter, Jesus speaking to the woman at the well, he said, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Is that right? If God made man in his own image, what kind of man did he make then? A spirit man. Glory. So the spirit man was made first. And remember, that spirit man wasn't made as nothing and then here's something. Because that would mean that would have a beginning and it does not. Eternal life doesn't have a beginning. Remember, we've been through this before. The word created. Remember, an automobile was in the Garden of Eden. Because every element that you got out there in your car, I don't care if it's plastic, titanium, alloy, uh, wheels, rubber, it was all in the ground at some period of time. There's nothing new under the sun. Everything, automobile was in the Garden of Eden. It just wasn't created. But it was always there. So this Genesis 126 man always was. He was in God. He was a part of God. Amen. And then he comes out to what? To come down to me and you to make us a God. Is that all right? In Genesis 2, there was no man to till the soil. Now he's talking, Genesis 1 is the spirit man. Genesis 2, there was no man to till the soil. And God made man out of the dust of the earth. Not in his image, but in the image of animal life. Amen. Hand like a bear, right. foot like a chimpanzee. He's done told us that. as many, many quotes. Right. And he put the spirit of man in this animal man here, and he became a living soul. Glory. Now, that's the difference between a man and the animal. The animal don't build automobiles. He doesn't do things like that to help his living and so forth like that. He's an animal. Dumb brute. Some of us may fall into that category. But he hasn't got a soul. The animal doesn't have a soul. He can't read and write. He can't talk, speak. He's a dumb brute. But a man is in flesh like a brute. But he's got a soul of God in him that makes him immortal. Boy, that's pretty heavy. And he can invent. Look what he can do. He's on almost on the equal with God. Well, look at today. They broke into God's laboratory. They went all the way back to DNA and all these different right. things that, that, that man, even at Brother Branham's era, it wasn't possible. Right. Now they make it possible. Because he's the son of God, even in his fallen estate, he's wonderful. Right. 
<clears throat> All right. So let's go to the next one. <clears throat> then I'll make some comments after this, after we get done right here. I will restore unto you, saith the Lord, 1954. All things beginning, cults begin. The church of God began in Genesis. You believe that? Notice closely now as we go into it now. Now the two that we want to deal with today, now here's my conception. That's when God made man in his own image. He made him spirit man, of course, because God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, I did not bring this quote, but remember, if you, if you know the essence of the message, Brother Branham said, God knew when he put them in human flesh, they would fall. Can't fall. That Genesis 126 man cannot fall, never will fall, never had a bad day, right. never sinned a day in his life because that's what came into you at the new birth right. and Amen. recreated Glory. the way it should have been right. had there not been a fall. Right. So we're not so far off of this, are we? Then he made man out of the dust of the earth. That's why I think botanists and so forth get there chronologist and gets all scrupled up. In other words, what he's talking about is, you know, they say, man, this man is 20 million years old and this one's 40 million years old because of carbon dating. And he says, foolish, and I believe it is too. When you realize that man in his five senses to contact his earthly home is in the image of beast, not in the image of God. Hmm? Man made in God's image was spirit man. Then he took that spirit man and put it into the two seven man or the flesh man that was made like animal with a male being the way a male's made and a female being the way the female's made. Is that all right? Right. right? And then there's no man to till the soil. He put man in the image of beast life. Right. And I know what you're thinking right now. The Bible says there's different kinds of flesh of animal and all these, and we can't coincide with them. Do you know why we can't? Do you know why we can't? We actually could. Could have. You're forgetting the beast. You're forgetting the beast. In creative evolution, Brother Brown said he could lean back toward the animals, but he could what? Accept, accept the woman, accept the woman of the because that's what happened. Okay, what did God do? God totally took that missing link. Took it out of the picture so there's no way we can get back and coincide with animals. Amen. Just real simple. Real simple. He put man in the image of beast life. Why? Creative evolution. Monkey, a little higher intelligence. The beast, obviously he was close enough to man to coincide with man. You understand what I mean? Mingle, seed mingle. And be able to stand upright and talk. I mean, that's just the truth. And then when God cut that thing off, he writes over in the New Testament, he said, now there's life of animal. And you're not, he said, don't lay with beast and all these things in the New Testament. I mean, the Old Testament, everybody got that? Yeah. Pretty plain. Why? Because he cut that off. Right. Because that was so, that's where the sin act happened was right here in that gap. Right. The missing link. We all went to school and everybody said, we don't know what that missing link is. Well, you know what? It's in the Bible. Right. But they don't understand it because I got to, I got a little quote here from, from uh, the Greek lexicon that talks about, uh, I just pulled it up. It says, Adam, the meaning of Adam is the red earth, the first man, the parent of the whole human race. That's a lie. We know it's a lie. Adam is not the parent of all human race. Don't look at me like that. The beast. There is a beast seed on this earth. Amen. Lord, from Cain. That's why the Bible says Adam's not the father of all living. But Eve is the mother of all living. Remember Cain and Abel were half brothers. They weren't full brothers. They were half brothers. And that was the beast seed that's still here. Brother Brown may ask him, say, where's it at? He said, it's still here. God didn't kill Cain. Cain killed Abel and tried to cut it off. And Adam and Eve had to get back together and bring Seth. But that Cain lineage, he went off to the land of Nod and, and populated the world half as much as the rest of them did. 
Everybody okay with that? So there was a beast life. That beast lineage is down through there somewhere. Right. We know it's all mingled together because the sons of God met the daughters of man, and it all just kind of intertwined. There's no way you can get a full lineage of one or the other. Right. It's like Brother Dale said, I don't care if they trace me back and I'm Cain's 759 millionth cousin. I don't care. The blood of Jesus Christ takes care of all that. Right. Amen. Amen. That's why he had to come back Glory. to take care of that. Lord, he put man in the image of beast life. He might give him a hand like a monkey, a foot like a bear. Remember, Brother Branham, he even used the analogy, when you skin a bear, now this is him, when you skin a bear, it looks like a, a, a small child. Right. Why? Because that, that creative evolution, <coughs> right up to man. And that's why we're in the, in the flesh part that we're in. Yeah. It's because of creative evolution. <clears throat> but the difference between the animal and the man, he made him a soul, a living soul. Yeah. Because the Spirit of God was in the man. And then the only way that God could redeem the man Amen. had nothing to do with the first Adam. Right. Zero. Right. Right. Zero right. to do with the first Adam. Right. Because the Spirit of God was in the man. Then the only way that God could redeem the man, then God came down and was made flesh to redeem the man that he had condemned in the flesh. And Adam couldn't be our redeemer. He couldn't even be. Listen, to be a kinsman redeemer, you had to be just like your kinfolk, right? Adam wasn't born. Adam was created a full-grown man. He cannot and will never be our brother. But Jesus Christ came out of the womb by the spoken word of God. That's the whole deal. It's the spoken word is the original seed. Has nothing. Man's sperm will kill you. We're dead while we're walking. I was thinking the other day, I was in the airport. All those people, five or 6,000 people down that one thing in Atlanta. Y'all know how crazy it is down there. We're all born the same way. And we all had the same choice. Every one of them. There's not a person. You can't look at nobody walking down the street and go, they were made different than me. No. They came the same way. So we're all put on the same level. And even Adam and Eve was put on free moral agency right. to decide what they were going to do Amen. when they were put in human flesh. Right. Right. Then the only way that God could redeem the man, then God came down and was made flesh to redeem the man that he had condemned in the flesh. That's when Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was made flesh and dwelt among us. Is everybody all right with that? Say Amen. amen. It's pretty simple, okay? All right, let's read uh, number four. I need to make a comment here. Number four. I just want you to understand why we're put in the bodies that we're put in. Because remember, Brother Branham says when we go back, when we go back to the Garden of Eden, there's no sex organs. Right. right. Exactly. Because your theophany don't have one. The spoken word is the original seed. Amen. And the word is the seed. That's the only seed we better be worried about. Listen, you had no way, none of you, ever decided that you were coming here. Right. You had zero to do with it. That's why Brother Brown, he said, I can see, I can see the virgin birth. God creates a sperm, or creates his one germ, brings an egg out of creation, places it in the womb. He said, you got here by millions upon right. millions of eggs and millions upon millions of germ, and then they crawled over each other, and pow, there you are. Right. God's going to get you here anyway. Right. Glory. Yeah, right. Amen? Right. Now, our bodies are made out of 16 different elements of the world. Am I okay? Am I hurting anybody's feelings? Some of you look like I am. <clears throat> you know he's going to have a little sex education class, did you? Now, our bodies are made out of 16 different elements of the world. We know that. 
It's made out of potash and a little calcium and petroleum and cosmic light and atoms and so forth. All bundled together and makes this body. Right. Comes from the dust of the earth. And remember, even Brother Brown says your body was in the Garden of Eden. Exactly. Your body was in the Garden of Eden. Your literal body. Right. Somewhere in that potash, calcium, and all that. Right. You eat food. As you eat food, then turns into from the dust. It comes from the dust, and it just goes right on. Your flesh, as far as your flesh, is no different from a horse or from a cow or anything else. It's still just flesh. Right. Hmm. Keep going. And boy, you glorify the flesh. But that spirit has a soul in there, my brother. That's right. But your flesh is just dust of the earth like the animal. Your flesh is no more than an animal. And if you lust after the flesh and the thing you see, lust after women, lust after these different things, it's still animal. That's right. That's right. You shouldn't do it. The spirit of God will lead you on and put you on a higher plane than that. That's what the Holy Ghost was given for, right. was to bring you to a higher plane. Glory. Amen? Right. All right, now let's read this one. Let's see what Adam's literal seed, now this is what was said, the literal seed was placed in Eve to save her. Right? Yeah. I got the quote from where it was said. All right? And I've heard it. I've heard it been preached two or three different times in different places, <clears throat> and it's false. It's wrong. It's not right. It's not biblical. So if it's not biblical, it's wrong. I don't care who says it. Now, couldn't we stop here just a minute and get a real sermon? Oh, if the blood has cleansed it back, what about now? Now, this is in the breach, right, when he's getting ready to preach the seals. Look what the Son of God, the second Adam, did. said, the works that I do shall you also. See, Adam lost his inheritance the earth. Now listen, Adam didn't lose his eternal life. Right. God's not an Indian giver. He didn't give Adam eternal life and then take it away from him. Right. He took the ability for Adam to take this thing and make it eternal. Because right. in Adam all die. Right. All right. So Adam lost his inheritance, the earth. Now it passed from his hand to the one he sold out to, Satan. He sold his faith in God to Satan's reasoning. Therefore, his eternal life, now look, his right to the tree of life, his right to the earth belonged to him, and he forfeited every bit to the hands of Satan. Now, if you read that quote and don't get the essence of the message, you see Brother Brown says he lost his eternal life. He lost his ability to become eternal in his flesh. He did not lose his Godship eternal life in his soul. Okay? Because remember, if you keep reading your genealogy there in the book of Luke 3, it goes down and says, and Adam which was the Son of God. Right. All right. Therefore, now it has been, it returned and has been polluted. The seed of Adam has destroyed, not saved, yeah. or redeemed. The seed of Adam has destroyed the inheritance that Adam should have had. Exactly. That's the earth, and that's this earth. Right. Right. All right. That's right, the seed of Adam. So how can a sex act do anything but kill you? Right. It can't raise you up. It can't save you. Exactly. All right? And I'll tell you what, what my thought on this is and, and take it for what it is. I, I really don't, it doesn't bother me. Now what happened? The polluted, oh my. Read that with me. The polluted seed of Adam has polluted and absolutely destroyed the land. Do you see any redemption in that? See any salvation in that? Do you know the Bible says that? And because that he has did this, the polluted seed of Adam, God will destroy him. If you don't, listen, if you don't get the second Adam inside of you to redeem you, you'll die. God will destroy you. Amen. Is that all right? Say amen. Shake yourself. The polluted seed of Adam has polluted and absolutely destroyed 
the land. Now, Adam was a godly man, but the thing he did destroyed the whole human race. Amen? Amen. In his flesh, what he did in his flesh destroyed the human race. No salvation in that. That's why the second Adam had to come in human flesh. Be born a baby by virgin birth, no sex, virgin birth, by the spoken word of God, which is the way it should have been to start with. And then he comes in, and listen, Adam's life, when Adam died at 900 and something years old, when Adam died, his theophany went into another dimension. And it's still there as far as I know. There's no way that even that great theophany of Adam, there's no way he can come back and come into you. Right? Right? Or he would be your Savior. We wouldn't have needed the second Adam. There's only one Savior, and that's the man that can come out and say, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me, and in 11 days, in 10 days, you go to that upper room, and I'm going to come back. I am going to come back, and I am going to redeem this whole human race. That's the Adam that planted a spiritual seed in the womb of your mind. Glory, And a new creation was born. Not of the old creation anymore. Sure, we carry the old creation right here. But inside, you're a new creation. If you're not born again, you're of the old creation. And God will destroy them. Number six. Everybody all right? Now, I know in answering one question, another one is apt to come up. <laughs> Boy, tell me about it. And people ask me, if Eve fell that way, what did Adam do? For God lays the blame on Adam. That is simple. The Word of God is forever settled in heaven. Let me read it one more time. Let me give you a George Quinn quote. The George Quinn quote says, Scripture cannot be broken. I love that. Scripture cannot be broken. The Word of God is forever settled in heaven. Before one speck of stardust was made, that Word, God's law, was there exactly as it's written in our Bible. Amen. Glory. Now, the Word teaches us that if a woman leaves her husband, listen to this now. I just read this in the book of Jeremiah. Just read it yesterday morning. And listen, look at me. If a woman goes out and has relations with another man, you're not supposed to take her back. The Bible tells you not to take her back. If she goes out and pollutes herself and has relations with another man, you're not supposed to take her back. Amen? That's what the Bible says. But remember, Adam did. So did Christ. Because you and I were married to another and we did all these horrible things. Right. Everybody okay? Amen. Because remember, like I said, it's got to be the essence. It's got to be the continuity of the message in the Bible all the way from Genesis to Revelation. Because it's the book of redemption. Genesis tells us the fall. All the way through tells us how he's coming back up with it. Now, the Word teaches us that if a woman leaves her husband and goes with another man, she is an adulteress and is no longer married, and the husband is not to take her back. That word was true in Eden as it was true when Moses wrote it in the law. You think, no, Adam, Eve, Eve was... For... The Bible was written before one speck of stardust was made. God's law it was there exactly as it is written in our Bible. So listen, there was redemption already written in the Bible. There was a lamb, not for just Eve, but for Adam. Not to take her back. That word was true in Eden as it was true when Moses wrote it in the law. The word can't change. Let me quote that one more time. Scripture cannot be broken. All right. The word can't change. Adam took her back. He knew exactly what he was doing, but he did it anyway. Right. She was a part of him, and he was willing to take her responsibility 
upon himself, right. not the act. Right. Remember, it started up here. Right. This is the first womb he got to. He would not let her go. So Eve conceived by him. He knew she would. He knew exactly what would happen to the human race, and he sold the human race into sin that he might have Eve, for he loved her. And I'm going to read you a quote in a few minutes where Brother Brown said, God should have sent us all to hell, but he went to hell and got us. Just like Eve, Adam, went out and got Eve and didn't have sex with her to save her. I'm just going to tell you that one more time. Please, good grief, folks. This is, we're, we're way too far up the line right. for that to be anything in our, in our thinking. Right. All right? And remember, truly the two sons that were born, they were born outside of the garden. Right. And they both needed a lamb. Amen. If not, if we go back to that where Adam's done what he did to save Eve, then it would have saved Abel, it would have saved Seth, it would have... No, they all needed a lamb to represent the fall and the redemption through the Lamb of God that was going to take away the sin of the world. That's what I mean. If you get the essence of the message, folks, forget... I don't say forget the quotes, but you've got to take the essence of this message. If you keep reading quotes, they will kill you. You will get confused. And there's no confusion in the Word of God, and there's no confusion in this message. It's what man has run it through their filter and confused it, which has what? Confused the people. All right, number seven. We've got to keep going. We've we got 16 quotes to read. Jeez. Okay. Everybody all right? Everybody's okay? All right, I'm not try- and I'm not trying to degrade nobody. I'm just going to tell you something. One word. One word off, and we're not going to take a body change. Exactly. I contend that we're going to be that one word on right. and take a body change. Amen. But we got to have this. Listen, if we have this thing lined up, there's no more fear. Right. The fear is, is whether I'm right and you're wrong yeah. <laughs> right. or whether you're wrong and I'm right. right. But when we see the Word of God and we all come underneath that Word of all God, right. we see that it's right. And the Holy Spirit inside of us connects with it and says, right. that ain't nothing but the truth. Exactly. That's, what a, that's what a woman did. She wasn't even in church. Yep. She was in her house cleaning up her kitchen. And the prophet of God said something, and she said, that ain't nothing but the truth. Right. He said, God heard that and told that woman whatever she wanted right. she could have. Right. Same way with you and I. Eve said, be it unto me according to thy word. That's the same thing Sister Hattie Wright said, be it unto me according to thy word. In other words, Brother Brown, what you said ain't nothing but the truth. And God honored that by giving her the what? The salvation of her two sons. Yonder I see Adam and Eve, Eve, that first little sweetheart there in the Garden of Eden. I see Adam back there when he put his arm around his little sweetheart to walk out with her. For God had condemned them. And he started out with his arms around his darling. Adam was not deceived. He didn't have to walk out. But he walked out because he loved his wife. He walked out with both eyes wide open. No matter if she had to go to torment, he'd go with her. Now, I'm going to tell you something right there. Stop. Look at me. Remember I talked about filial love and agape love. That's filial love but it turned right straight into agape love. Because listen, for him to take a woman back that had laid with a beast, an animal, and he knew it, he could have had her destroyed and made a whole brand new another one, but it wouldn't have been him. It wouldn't have been Adam. It would have been something else. Is that Okay. But he took her back because agape love took over. Glory. Where filial love started, agape love took over. Right. Right. To love, because look, watch, because look, God doesn't love us with filial love. God has never loved you with filial love. 
He doesn't know what filial love. Filial love comes after agape love fell down because remember, right. Brother Brown said it starts with agape love, filial love, lust. Right. All, he goes all the way and names all of it right down to the bottom to prostitutes and all that stuff like that. But it started with agape love. Yeah. When God looked down and seen that love of a human being, but see, remember, it was Adam. I believe it was the inside man. Right. Yeah. That Genesis 126 right. man right. Exactly. is the one that took her back, right. not the flesh guy. Right. Right. And I'll explain to you in just a minute what I think about that. It was Because so, remember, there's no doubt he had intercourse with Eve. Yeah. No doubt. It's in the Bible. Right. <clears throat> but we'll look at something in just a minute. If you'll hang with me just a minute. When God looked down and seen that love of a human being, it was so great that he couldn't stand it himself. That's right. He said, I'll come and go too. And said, I'll put enmity between her seed and the serpent seed. Right. Then you see 4,000 years later, you continue on. And you see the second Adam comes. But look back yonder when Adam was leaving with his sweetheart. Going out under condemnation was a shadow of redemption somewhere. Not redemption. A shadow exactly. of redemption somewhere because there was blood running over them. Yeah, right. Remember, God killed the animals and throwed the skins in. They put the skins on. All right. Somewhere there was a shadow. He knew it. And I hear something going, Brother Bram Klaus. Yeah. What is it? It's the old bloody sheepskin beating up and down on his leg, speaking of some time. Wow. And I can see him going yonder. Now, look, this is the second Adam. <clears throat> now, the second Adam going up the hill, the little spots on his back, they got bigger and bigger as he walked on. What is it? After a while, they got all into one spot. I hear something beating again. What is it? There goes the second Adam. Yeah. Now, if the first Adam had any redemption, why do we need a second one? Right. 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 That's right. <clears throat> no more than Jehovah himself, who comes down and was made flesh to what? even to go to hell with his sweetheart right, right. to redeem her back. Right. Amen. Amen. Christ to redeem his bride. Hallelujah. He's seen it in Adam yonder. What? A shadow. Yeah. Right. Right. And he comes down, was made flesh, kinfolks with us, that he might marry the human race to himself. Amen. There he is going yonder to Calvary. Amen. that all right? Married the human race to himself so he could be our kinsman redeemer. Number eight, <clears throat> what does it take to make a Christian life? Now, women must bring forth this germ of life, her and man together by connection. We won't go into that because you'd certainly disagree with me. Now, what he's doing is he's talking about what happened in the garden. It wasn't apples they taken in the Garden of Eden. So then when they did, let it be what it may. See, he's in Chicago in 1957. He's not really into serpent seed all over the place now. He's trying to kind of, you know, work his way around it so they don't. Because you know what? He knows they're humans, and they'll shut it. When he says it was sex between Eve and a beast, they'll go, right. That's right. and they'll all walk out the door. Right. But he says, look, so then when they did, let it be what it may. Woman sinned. Man never sinned. Now watch. He stops because he's wrong. I mean, man sinned, woman never sinned. Right. The woman was actually deceived. Adam was not deceived. Yeah. He knowed what he was doing. Exactly. Eve actually thought she was right. right. She was getting some new light that Satan was giving her. He's still giving her that light. Yeah. But he said, stay with the Bible. Right. That's it. But he told her, now wait, God said, but he said, surely. And then whatever it was, the act was committed. He's, we know what that was. Yeah. And then she enticed her husband. Yeah. It don't look like Adam was over there trying to pull Eve in. Yeah. It looks like Eve was selling him the product because right. she partook first. Right. Then she enticed her husband, right. him knowing it was wrong, how can you get a right act out of something wrong? Right. <clears throat> and Adam walked out of the Garden of Eden because the love of his wife right. 
which was a type of Christ knowing no sin, right. come down and was made sin for his church, right. walked right out knowing what he was doing. I have power to lay it down or take it up. He walked out knowing what he was doing and was partakers of our transgression that he might redeem us back. There's only one redeemer, folks. That's Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Not, a, not an Adam, not a first Adam, the second Adam. Because you know why? You know why he could redeem us? He can come back in us. Adam couldn't come back in you and me. The, the lambs and the doves and the turtles not, couldn't come back into me and you. It had to be a man. And it had to be a supernatural man inside that natural man so he could come back and what? Spiritually multiply himself. Is that all right? That he might redeem us back. What a beautiful, and it is. It's one of the most beautiful pictures in the world is redemption. Number nine, thirsting for life. <clears throat> now we see the different types of life. That's the reason that this man's born as a product of Adam, which was a product of sin from listening to his wife. Right. Now, how are you going to get redemption from that? How are you going to get salvation from that? You can't. Which was a product of sin from listening to his wife, yep. and the wife was a product of sins come from Satan. Right. And Adam followed his wife out a perfect type of Christ going with his bride to take her sins as Adam took the sins of Eve and left the Garden of Eden, not deceived, but willingly walked out with her. So was Christ not deceived. Satan could not deceive him. If thou be the Son of God. Did y'all know, I, I didn't bring this quote, but the three temptations in the Garden, in, when Jesus came out and went through that 40 days of temptation... The three things that he was tempted is the three things that she fell from in the garden, which is a whole other sermon. But it's the same identical thing. The second Adam went through the same thing the first Adam went through with temptation of Satan, pride of life, um, and the other two. But that's exactly what happened in the garden. I, I, I didn't bring that quote, but, man, it was very powerful. You can look it up yourself if you want to. But he deliberately walked out and took sin for the church. He's our sin bearer. Adam cannot be a sin bearer. Right. The sac he fell in sin. Right. Right. All right, next. Conferences with God, 1959. God selected a certain tree in the Garden of Eden, and after he had thrown out them old bloody sheepskins into the behind the bushes, he called Adam and Eve, and there he made a conference, talked over, made a remedy for this horrible thing that his children had done. God's conference, and there was a decision made. Always at a conference, there's a decision. And God made a decision that because that Eve had, when he held her at the witness stand, because she had took life from the world, she'd have to bring life into the world. And to Adam and to the serpent, whoa, of course, that being the head of the race, all the race under it fell with Adam. There's no salvation in any act of Adam. That's what caused the fall. Exactly right. Number 11. And everybody, knows, you ought to be able to quote this. Now notice, making it known, Christ the mystery of God revealed. And I want to tell you something else. You may not think this is from God, but I'll promise you for three days I've been looking up quotes. And all I'd done was is when I'd get a thought, I'd find a quote and I'd put it in here. I never had to move these quotes. Number one stayed number one. Number two stayed number two. Now, I interjected that first one because of the one word off. But every one of them was exactly the way I moved them from the message right into this. I never had to move them around or cut and paste. They came right together, every one of them, right in line. All right. <clears throat> now, notice, make it known. How, and my, there's just so much here we could just keep on going. Notice the tree of Christ's body in the garden, making his mystery known to this bride tree. Watch. Redeemed and Eve again, man and woman, which are one, made out of the same blood and the same spirit and everything else, by Christ, the second Adam. You believe he was, congregation says, amen. Going back home to Eden with his fallen wife, redeemed back home again. That's Christ in the church today, taking his wife back. 
See the threefold mystery now God manifested in Christ. Christ manifested in the church all together to bring back the original Adam. Amen. There was nothing wrong with the original Adam. The original. All right, let's go to number 12. Man running from the presence of the Lord. It's always been that. It's been in man, has shirked and went away from God ever since Adam in the Garden of Eden. When Adam was in the Garden of Eden, when he come to the responsibility to make his choice, would he stay with God or go with his wife? He had to make that, re he had to make that the, the responsibility was up to him. He either had to take what his wife said or what God said. And when he chose to go the way of his wife, and when he did that, then he lost his original condition and brought the whole world subject to death. Hmm. When he had to take the responsibility or either accepting a new light that his wife had found, which was contrary. Oh, God, think of it. God only gave them about eight or ten words to keep. There was no Bible. There was no 1,100 sermons. There was no Dwight Moody. There was no... That's right. He gave them ten words. Yeah. But of that tree thou shalt not eat. That's all they had to keep. And even with that much word, they broke it. Right. Uh, it says they broke it. Then Adam had to face up. Will I, will I do as my wife had said do? He listened to his wife. Or shall I do what God said do? And he walked out with his eyes open. He had to take the responsibility that throwed the whole human race unto death. Exactly. Now find me any life in that. There is none. All right, number 13, power of transformation. Now we find out that this fellow found Eve in the Garden of Eden, this young woman that knowed no sin, knowed not what her neckiness was. And he knew what Satan knew. He was smart, subtle, wise, and he told her the seed, the fruit was pleasant and it was desirable. And when he lived with her that morning, and then see then the afternoon, she persuaded Adam. It don't tell it that don't tell me that, that Adam quickly took her and and done what he did to her. It shows me that um, she persuaded Adam to do the same thing, right. telling him what it was. And then Adam deliberately, knowing he not, ought not to have done it, walked out with his wife and did this act, right. which finally would have come to it anyhow. Right. But see, it had to be that way. The wisdom of God because this then, that displays his attribute to be a savior, a father, and a healer. God knew when he put Adam and Eve in human flesh, they would fall. But when they fell, he had already made, made a way for them to get back. But to be a complete, to be God, he had to be a savior, a father, and a healer. He couldn't be that in the Garden of Eden before the fall. Amen? But now remember, he didn't make them do it either. He didn't entice them in any way. He gave them total free moral agency to do what they were doing. All right? Number 14. <clears throat> and then we'll get to number 15, which is what we're, what we're looking at here. We're not doing too bad. Lay out of sin, church age. Quick look at these scriptures when involved the Lord Jesus. Now, this isn't a lay out of sin, church age. In Matthew 4, wherein Jesus is tempted of the devil, he overcame the personal temptation of Satan by the word and by the word only. Oh, this is it right here. In each of the three major trials that, co that corresponded exactly to the temptation of the Garden of Eden. Right. You ever thought about that? Yeah. You probably read that quote a hundred times. But whatever Satan tempted Adam at the first with, he, he tempted the second Adam right. with the same thing. What? Three things. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Man, right. Jesus overcame by the word. Right. Eve fell to the personal temptation of Satan by fa failing to use the word. Adam fell in direct disobedience right. to the word. But Jesus overcame by the word. Amen. And right now, let me say this, is the only way to be an overcomer 
Also, it is the only way that you can know if you are overcoming because that word can't fail. All right. Now, here's the quote that everybody that they use to base their. And now let me tell you, don't look before we get started. George Quinn quote, scripture cannot be broken. Brother Brown can't say one thing that the scripture didn't say. And the scripture says, in Adam, all die. Right. All right. And then we're going to read now. We're going to also read in Romans, and we'll, we'll cap this thing off in the book of Romans 5, verse 14. Explains every bit of it. Thy time in church age. See, you see, death or organization came and the church died. Or to make it plainer, death became a resident, wherein shortly before only life reigned. As the original Eve brought death to mankind, so now organization has brought death. For organization is the product of the double corruptors, Nicolaitism and Balaamism, propagated by the prophetess Jezebel. Right. Now, Eve should have been burned along with the serpent for their awful deed. But Adam intervened. Now, remember, don't forget all them 14 quotes I just read you. And one more quote I'm going to tell you. Scripture cannot be broken. Right? Right? In Adam, all die. Exactly. Now, Eve should have been burned along with the serpent for their awful deed, but Adam intervened, taking her quickly to himself so, so that she was saved. You know what she got saved from? It didn't save her from sinning. She died, right. What did it save her from? She died anyway. It saved her from God killing her right then. But when this satanic religion has gone the full course of the ages, there will be no one to intervene. In other words, Christ has already took his bride and he's not intervening anymore. She will be burned with her seducer for the whore and her children and the Antichrist and Satan will all find their place in the lake of fire. So let me read that again. Adam intervened. Now, don't forget them 14 quotes we had before. Where Eve enticed Adam. Eve sold Adam the product. Adam went out with her, right. took her sin on himself. So that's not talking about what that brother's talking about right. or those brothers are talking about. That has nothing to do with a natural seed. Right. No way. Because right. scripture cannot be broken. Right. In Adam, all right. die. Right. And Adam's seed polluted the earth. I just read you that quote too. Does everybody understand that? Right. So how could us? That's why I don't understand. It's just not common sense. Common sense will tell you that the act that we were born under is what's killing us. Right. The natural man and woman getting together and having you, y'all are getting older and so am I. Right. Because of natural seed. Right. We're not natural seed children anymore. Right. We're already here. But we're supposed to be spiritual born seed. Amen. Brother Brown preached the spoken word's original seed. He spent six hours, six hours trying to explain that the spoken word right. is the original seed. Right. Man's seed is what got it all in trouble. Exactly. And the poor old beast was just a vessel. He had no, he was, he was just. He was just incarnated by the devil and the devil took over and, well, I don't have to explain that to the adults of what he told Eve. He said, hey, Eve, look. I think I was, let me just, I'm just going to go through it. Is this okay? The beast says, Eve, <clears throat> I was here before you were. Creative evolution. So there was a beast there and then, then in the sixth day, because the beast was created on the fifth day. Right. All the animals was created on the fifth day. Sixth day man was created. Right. right? So he said, hey, Eve, I got here before you did. And said, I, I remember God saying something. Now, this is Satan talking through the beast. He's got to be slick. Oh, yeah. He can't just tell her what he wants to do to her. You understand what I mean? Right. She's got to first receive it up here. Right. Amen? So he tells her, he says, hey, he said, I remember, didn't God tell you to multiply and replenish the earth? 
Because, see, Satan was standing right there when that Genesis 126 man was spoke. Exactly. Right? Right. He was standing right there, and he heard God say, Let us make man in our own image. Male and female created he them. Multiply and replenish the earth. Yeah. And the beast said, Me and Mrs. Beast, we making kids. All right? Look at the little, look at the little lambs. There's little lambs running all over the place. There's little sheep running all over the place. There's little cows running all over the place. He said, all I see is you and Adam. Yeah. What's Adam not doing? Because, you know, he had to turn it towards Adam's fault. He had to say, well, now, wait a minute. Because remember, Brother Brown said Eve, was got a, Eve got a new revelation. She didn't get it from Adam. She got it from the devil. And she presented it to Adam after she did what she did. So here, here Satan and the beast says, I can help you do that. Because remember, Brother Brown said Satan knew the principles of life. Exactly right. He knew that in creative evolution that that beast could coincide with the man or coincide with the beast. He knew that. Yeah. Uh, right. why, how did he know? How, why, how did he know to go straight to that? Because that was the closest thing to the human. Right. And it would co-mingle. Right. Right. And, and remember, Satan don't have a seed. Right. Satan's not a creator. Right. Satan had to borrow the beast, right. the body of the beast, to do the act, talked Eve into doing the act, and then that happened. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. He just kept going. I believe maybe it was days, months, years. It could have been hundreds of years. It really didn't matter. Yeah. <clears throat> there was not any time before the fall. So he just kept talking to her, and finally she said, okay. Remember what she said? She took and presented the product to Adam. Well, the product was Adam, me and this beast here have been talking, got together, and this is what we've done. Now listen, Adam wasn't an idiot. Adam was the god of the earth. Is everybody all right with that? Adam was the god of the earth. Adam knew the principles of life also. He knew what would happen because he would watch. You could see the whole world repopulating by, by, by intercourse. But that was put for God to give to the animals, not to the man. Because we were not supposed to reproduce sexually. We were supposed to reproduce by the spoken word of God. Amen? Because the spoken word is the original seed. Why did he spend six hours preaching that sermon? But she didn't take the spoken word. She took Satan's idea and committed the act. First in her brain, because remember... Mary had to do the same thing. She had to receive it up here. Remember, she said, oh, how do I do this not knowing the man? It was up here. How, do I, how can I do this not knowing the man? The Holy Ghost said, don't you worry. Or Gabriel said, don't you worry. Said the Holy Ghost is going to overshadow you and said, what's going to be born in you is Isaiah 9, 6. And when he said that, she said, be it unto me according to thy word. And from her spoken word, and from the Holy Ghost doing what he did, she received the seed without any sensation. So he could be our brother. Now listen, on the day of Pentecost, when 120 little Jesuses were born, they weren't born sexually. They were already born. They were born dead. Jesus kept telling them, unless you believe I am he, you'll die in your sins. He's the only one that could come out of the grave, go over into another dimension, come back into this dimension, and divide himself out right. to redeem man, right. starting with 120 and going to 3,000. And now look at us. We were all born again by the incorruptible Word of God. In other words, the incorruptible seed Word of God. A man, the son of man went and sowed seed. He didn't sow natural seed. He sowed spiritual seed because you and I are now spiritual children by the union of God and us together made a spiritual union. Right. He planted the seed word of God in my... It, listen, you're receiving it now. Right. 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 
You're receiving the seed word of God now. Not just me standing up here, but when you read the Bible, when you get a revelation, that's the way it's supposed to be, and that's God making love to you, not the other way. That's a perversion or a, or a shadow of what God's trying to do with us. So it can't be Adam planting his natural seed. No. He said, God, I'll take her sin. I'll cover her because I know what she did. And I know who did it. And you know what I'd have said? I'd have said, God, you already took care of that part. Remember, he took the beast and he said, on your, on your belly. He took that completely out of the picture. But then God said, he said, I'll put enmity between thy seed. Talking about Satan and the seed of the woman. And a woman doesn't have seed. She received a spiritual seed word. And that's what saves us, folks, is not a natural sex act. Right. What saves us is the spiritual word of God entering in the womb of our mind. Amen? Right. Not a natural act. All right, now, let me cover this. Let's read this right here real quick. Watch this. We okay? Ten minutes till nine. We'll, we'll close in just a minute. Smyrna Church Age. I'm going to give you my... <clears throat> give you my thought on this, but watch. Smyrna Church Age. Now, I'd read the Church Age book a hundred times, and I'd never read this. Have you ever done that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Once in a while, once in the morning, while in the afternoon. Man, Adam, took life and turned it into death. But this man, Jesus, took death and turned it into life. Adam took innocence and turned it into guilt. This one took guilt and turned it into righteousness. Yeah. Adam took a paradise and turned it into a waste, howling wilderness. But this one is coming back to turn an earth rocking and reeling with destruction into another Eden. Adam took a life of fellowship and joy with God and turned it into a desert of spiritual darkness that brought forth all sin, moral decay, pain, suffering, delusion, and corruption that wars within the souls of men. But this one, from all the tragic death and degradation that filled mankind, brought forth a life of righteousness and beauty. So that as sin once reigned unto death, even so might men now reign in righteousness by one, Christ Jesus. And not as the offense was, though terrible indeed it was, but now much more is his gift unto eternal life. Glory. Now, do you know that he's quoting Scripture? Yeah. That is exactly Romans 5.14. Yeah. Right. Turn it over. Let's read Romans 5.14. He's actually read, he read that whole Scripture, but he, he interpolated. Yeah. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, right. who is the figure of him that was to come. In other words, Adam, remember Brother Brown said, well, Adam and Eve caused all this. He said, no, they caused theirs, you caused yours. Right. All right. Who is the figure of him that was to come, Christ Jesus, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, what is the offense? Adam and Eve. Right. Or Adam selling the human race, really. Much more the grace of God and the gift by grace which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. What? Christ came. He didn't come sinful. He came to take our sin. Amen. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, Adam, but the free gift is of many offenses under justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, Adam, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Amen. Jesus Christ. Glory. That's your answer right. right there. Adam turned this thing upside down. Right. He had no ability to bring Eve back, so he went out with her. Right. He had no way to redeem Eve. And when Brother Brown talks about being saved, that don't mean saved like saved. You understand what I mean? No, that means that it kept God from killing her, 
Because same way he even explains that Adam, I mean, that uh, God should have killed Sarah. God should have killed Sarah for laughing in her heart. But, but God, Brother Brown said God couldn't get to Sarah because of Adam. I mean, because of Abraham. But God couldn't get to Eve because the first Adam said, I'll take her. Now you say, well, you know, he did, he did commit the, the act. Yeah, he did. You want to know my thoughts on it just before we close? You can mull this around and run it through your Holy Ghost filter. It's absolutely true that Adam had relations with Eve. Brother Brown said the beast that morning and Adam shortly after that. Now we understand that that case happened back in the 60s in California the same way. She, this lady had relations with her husband in the morning and had relations with the gardener or black guy in the afternoon. All right, now I don't know the science of all this, but you know one thing's for sure, sisters, that when you do have relations and you start having a child, your womb closes. Right? Your womb closes up and you can't receive anything else to make another baby until that nine months is over. Is everybody okay with that? I know you might have to explain this to your kids, but you know what? They got to know it sometime. Okay? So Adam, what did Adam do? Adam, y'all quit laughing. So Adam, Zach, so Adam saw what Eve had done. He saw what Eve had done. He could not reverse that because he's not that kind of a God. He's not God. He, yes, he could have killed her, but agape love took over and said, even though she laid with a beast, she's me. She's not another woman. She's me. She is me made manifest in another form called a woman. What are we? We'll cry. We are Christ made manifest in another form called a bride. Amen? We're Christ made manifest. And listen, if Adam hadn't have done what he done, the womb would have closed up and you would have only had Cain's lineage. Amen? So that's why Adam did what he did. He understood that if he didn't do something, he wouldn't have a lineage. Because it is a natural lineage. It does start a natural lineage. Adam begot this one, and Seth begot, um, yeah, Seth begot this one, and this one begot that one. There would have been no lineage. And you know what? There would have been no way to write the Bible. I know you're looking at me a little funny, but there'd be no way to write the Bible the way it was already written except Adam did what he did to raise up a natural seed that would have a chance, that would have a chance to meet that Redeemer one day. There would have not have been a Job, Isaiah, Jeremiah. There would have not been those great prophets had Adam not done what he did. So you know what? What he did killed Eve, killed him too. But he preserved a natural race so that God could, hey, he was using the mind of Christ. He did not lose the mind of Christ. He still was thinking like God. Hallelujah. He still was thinking like God. I can't save them naturally or spiritually, but I can sure try to save them and put some people on this earth and let God that I can't, that I can't fellowship with no more because God run them out of the garden. He lost his fellowship. God couldn't come down in the cool of the day. But, but Genesis 3.15, God stood there and said, Adam, you can't do nothing about this, but I will. I will. I'll not just bruise the heel. I'll cut his head off. I'll bruise. I'll come down and come basically the same way. That you come. I mean, that your children are coming. But I'm going to come the sinless one. Yeah. I'm going to come and I'm going to redeem. That's what Job, Job would have never been able to say, I know my Redeemer liveth if Adam hadn't a hurriedly. He didn't wait four or five days to take Eve. He couldn't have because her womb would have closed up. You understand? I'm talking natural. So Adam knew. Folks, he still had the mind of God. We think he's a bumbling idiot after the fall. He's not. Do you know one thing's for sure? 
He had to be the doctor, the pharmacist. They wasn't but just a few people on earth. Amen? He didn't lose his godlike quality. I don't think he did. He could remember. So he did what he did, not to save Eve, but to save a lineage that had a chance. Because he couldn't go take her and go back in the Garden of Eden. Only God. Only the Redeemer that hung on Calvary could take us back to the Garden of Eden. By what? Planting a spiritual seed and changing us and multiplying us the way it should have been had there not been a fall. Oh, Satan, you just, I'm sorry, son, I'm sorry. You cannot and will not win. You can pervert all you want to pervert, Satan, but they'll come a group of people. One more time, Scripture cannot be broken. In Adam, in the first Adam, all die. But in the second Adam, by a spiritual multiplication. When you talk about seed and talk about God, God's seed is only his word. This is the seed of God. Because this is where you get your new birth from is from this right here. And the new birth is what? God planting a spiritual seed in the womb of your mind. And you say, be it unto me according to thy word. Let's stand to our feet. When God came, when God came down and Jesus was on that river, there was a voice that said, This is my beloved son in whom I'm pleased to dwell. Amen. He had waited four thousand years exactly. to be able to say that. Because right. he was in Adam, but he was in no one else. Because remember, even the spiritual womb was closed yeah. until he came on earth. And on the day of Pentecost, there was 120 spiritual wounds opened up and God came down and settled down because Paul says, we have the mind of Christ. That's what comes to you at your new birth. And I I don't say this to belittle no one, but you can't can't run what was preached through my filter and get the right answer, get that answer. But you can run it. See, you got to take it back to the Word of God. The Word of God cannot fail, will not fail, And there's no way that it can be broken. It has to come to pass. Somebody preached that Sunday, I believe. It has to come to pass because Scripture cannot be broken. In Adam, all die. Listen, if you have a need tonight, bow your head. If you have a need tonight, just raise up your hand. God knows your heart. You don't have to come up here. But we're going to close the service out. We're going to pray. And then we'll be dismissed. It's a little bit after 9 o'clock. I am sorry, but I hope it's helped somebody. I hope it's, I hope it's righted some ships. You know, you know we all, we're all a ship. But the Holy Ghost is your rudder. It tells you what's right and what's wrong and what to do with the Word. So every head bowed, every eye's closed. If you have a need, raise your hand. To Heavenly Father, in our Humanity, we have to cry out to you for healing of our body. We have to cry out to you for for the things of life. But Lord, you said just believe. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Lord, I pray tonight that every need that's underneath these hands that are raised, that you will honor that hand that went up and that you'll give them the desire of their heart. Lord, we're standing here at the ending of time. We are closer to the new Eden than anyone on the face of the earth has ever been. We're staring it right in the face. And Lord, I pray that we will not be one word off. We'll not be that first Eve. 
And you told us through our prophet that God's going to prove in the end time that the second Eve will not fall like the first Eve did. Father, with our hands to you, we pray for all sickness, deliverance, healing, salvation, a closer walk with you, Lord. All these many things, Lord, come down tonight and as we drive home or as we go through tomorrow in our daily duties and protect us, Lord, as we go through life, I pray that, Lord, you'll speak to each one of our hearts and say, it is well. It is well with my soul. Lord, you brought us these things, and I pray that they'll, you said they would not return void, but would accomplish everything that they said they would accomplish. Father, forgive us of our sins and our many mistakes that we make against you, Father. We pray that you'd forgive us, Lord. But also, I pray that you would bind us together, bring us up that statue of a perfect man, Lord, <clears throat> where we'll be more in the image of you, and we won't have to deal with, with this one word off. Lord, that we can speak just like you do. Amen. Lord, when you walked the face of this earth, you were not one word off. You brought us the true unadulterated word of God. And thank you, you sent us a prophet in this end time to take this message and marry it with the Bible. Not do away with the Bible, not change the Bible, but give us clarity and give us hope and faith that we can make it to that body change. Father, just be with us as we go home. Be with Brother Dale and myself as we're on the highways tomorrow. Everyone that's on the highways going to work, we got a long journey, but I pray that you'll make it short, Father. We believe you, Lord, that you came tonight, and we pray that you would leave with us, and we cast every care we have on you, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray these things. The only Redeemer, the only Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You're dismissed. God bless you. <clears throat> Take the name of Jesus with you, child of Saul.